In this video, I'm going to try and make thermite using pennies. Here I have a bunch of pre-1981 pennies, so they should be all copper. I'm not going to try and melt them. I'm going to try and get them hot enough to the point where they start to oxidize, because I want to get some copper to oxide. And then, once I get that copper to oxide, I can mix it with some aluminum powder, and I should have a nice thermite. I decided to add a few copper pipes to my crucible. In the bottom there, the pennies are still there though. I think I'm going to leave the lid off because I want to get the most oxygen flow as possible. I'm also going to open the oxygen flow regulator pretty wide. I'm just going to let it go until the copper pipes start to look a little bit flat. I'm going to pour these red hot copper pipes and pennies into the pan so that the copper 2 oxide flakes off and hopefully gets captured inside the pan. If you look closely, you can see little pieces of copper 2 oxide flaking off of the metal. All these little flakes are copper 2 oxide. Here is one of the copper pipes. You can see it has a bunch of red all over it. I think that might be copper 1 oxide. I don't think it matters that much whether or not it's copper 2 or copper 1, but I'm trying to make only copper 2. We actually got surprisingly more copper oxide than I expected. If you're wondering why the copper oxides flaked off of the metal so well, that's because the copper and the copper oxide layer cool at different rates. Since they both cool at different rates, they both expand and contract at different rates as well. This causes the copper oxide layer to sort of just hop off of the copper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up all these pennies and copper pipes some more and put them back in here and see if I can get more copper oxide. I might do that a few more times and once I have enough I'll just go make some thermite out of it. I put this little piece of glass over top of the pan so that the flakes don't jump out. So this is all the copper oxide that we got from the furnace. What I'm going to do now is individually brush off each penny and copper pipe with a toothbrush to get the maximum yield of copper 2 oxide. I'm going to weigh the copper oxide now that we scraped it all off. It appears that we got about 8 grams, and this kind of surprised me. I wasn't really expecting this much. This copper oxide is pretty impure though, but I don't think it should matter. Since we got about 8 grams of copper oxide, we're going to need about 3 grams of aluminum powder. As you can see in this video, I put a little bit more than 3 grams. It doesn't need to be exact. So I'm going to go pour it on that little pot right there, and I'm going to light it with this magnesium strip. Wow! Wow, that was a much more violent reaction than I usually get when I make it out of iron or something. Let's go look at the carnage. So we can see some little blobs of pretty impure copper. These rocks are ridiculously hot. That must have released an insane amount of energy in that short of a period of time. Pretty cool that you can make a thermite just out of copper pennies and pipes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe.